Hi, we have Lucy, Jack Benny, Groucho, Dean Martin, and Jerry Lewis, classic sci-fi and movies. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you'll join us. It's all free. We're Wayback Machine One, classic TV. Thanks. Presented by Maslin Beauty Blend Grotto. Tonight's tale of tomorrow, The Bitter Storm, starring Arnold Moss. Good evening. Well, now that the holidays are over and we're sort of settling down into our everyday routines, I'd like to read you a little editorial that I thought was particularly timely. As usual, it's here in the shuttle, this little magazine put out for and by the people that work in the Maslin Mills. And it goes like this. The Christmas season is undoubtedly the loveliest time of the entire year. People walk through the streets looking friendlier, more relaxed, anticipating happy family gatherings. Bus drivers smile more often. Strangers engage in conversation more readily. Life seems very much worth living. But let's not pack away all this goodwill with our Christmas tree ornaments, not to be taken out again until next year at this same time. The time to love our fellow man, to think happy thoughts about one another, is not just when sweet carols fill the air. It's all the time. Each one of us can do our part to make this world we live in a better and happier one, if we'll try to keep our Christmas spirit alive throughout the whole year. Now, don't you think that's something we all ought to try to do? I do. And now, let's look at Act One of tonight's Tale of Tomorrow. The Bitter Storm, starring Arnold Moss. I'm beginning to get a bit concerned about Pat. getting worse. I hope they stay over on the mainland. It's much too rough to try to make it back in the launch in this weather. Well, there's that interference again. Now, why, why, why? It shouldn't be happening. I've checked and rechecked every detail. Leland. Leland. Huh? Would you like your tea now? Tea? Oh, oh, tea. Yes, that'd be fine. Oh, listen to that wind howling. What's the matter with this thing? Can't you find out what's wrong with it, Leland? I'd rather not say. I'm sorry, Madeline. I don't really mean to be difficult. I guess that it's just been that I, I've been living alone on this island too long. Madeline, do you like living here? Well, of course I do, Leland. And Leland, it was wonderful of you to take Pat and me in like this after Charles passed away. You were the only one we could turn to. Well, it was the least I could do for my own sister. Madeline, I know that I'm not easy to get along with. Well, I must confess there are times when your behavior is, well, a bit different from what I'm accustomed to. It's this island. I've been very lonely, Madeline. Very lonely. 
Then why did you stay out here so long? Be as far away from them as possible. To be safe. Safe? From whom? Prying, cheating, selfish people. But please. I should have been a rich man by now. Others have made fortunes out of my work, but not me, no. All I have is this old house on an abandoned island. Oh, you're slightly drenched, that's all. Well, thank heavens, you're back. Oh, good gracious, you children must be frozen. Well, Steve's worked. He had to mow the launch down the channel and row back to shore. Miss Weather, you're mad. You didn't want your boat pummeled against the dock, did you? It's really starting to blow out there. It really is. Oh, Mother, can we have some of that hot tea? Well, of course. Say, that looks good. Aren't you going to join us, Professor? Huh? Oh, no, no, not right now. What's the matter with Uncle Leland? I think I'll go upstairs for a little while. If you don't mind. Of course, Leland. Gosh, he's a strange man. Lovely to hear you. He's just upset about his work, that's all. That thing? What is it, anyway? Well, you can tell me. No, we can't, really. We don't know. Leland's very secretive about his work. You mean you've been in the house with this thing all these weeks and you don't know what it is? That's right. You know, I've been dying of curiosity, too. The night last week when everybody was asleep, I almost turned it on. Pat, you didn't. No, I didn't. I just thought about it. That's about as far as I got. Well, he's upstairs now. Why don't we try it? Steve, no. Well, Mother Uncle Leland will never know. He might hear. Oh, he won't hear us. Go ahead, Steve. Turn it on. Well, let's see. Well, here it goes. Nothing yet. You don't suppose it'll blow up, do you? Silly. Oh, gracious, you children must be frozen. My mother's worse. He had to moor the launch out in the middle of the channel and row back to shore. In this weather, you're mad. You didn't want your boat pummeled against the dock, did you? It's really starting to blow out there. Uncle Leland. I knew I couldn't trust you. My own family. It was all my fault. It was my idea. I don't want to throw you all out of this house right this minute. It was only innocent curiosity, Leland. We didn't mean any harm. Innocent curiosity when I asked you not to touch it? Isn't there anybody I can trust? I wish you'd let me apologize, Professor Russell. After all, we aren't trying to steal it from you. Leland. Leland, you must be a little more trusting. Have a little more love for your fellow man. Oh, can't you ever forget that you were once married to a pastor? Leland, there are some things you have to believe in, you know. You can't go through life being so suspicious of people. Well, what am I supposed to do? Have a little faith in people, Leland, that's all. Should I have faith in a Rutherford who, who stole my new vacuum tube and is still collecting awards? On my work, should I, Madeline? Or should I have faith in a Bennington who paid me $60 a week to work in his laboratory while he pocketed thousands a week in royalties from my inventions? Is that the kind of people you want me to put my faith in? No, Leland, but you're destroying yourself with bitterness. All this was long ago. Maybe I ought to put my faith in my family who, who tampers with a delicate mechanism that's taken me over five years to perfect. when we turned it on. I guess it's some sort of a recorder. Is that it, Professor? Recorder? It's nothing quite so simple. Well, then what is it, Leland? After all, we've heard it now. Surely you can tell us about it. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe some other time. Uncle Leland, please tell us about it. Please. Well, all right. You heard your own voices because this is a machine that picks up and recaptures the sounds of the past. What kind of sounds? Well, voices, for one thing. 
There's no limit to the voices that you can hear on my machine, so long as they've once been spoken on Earth. You mean any voice that's ever been spoken, no matter when? Exactly. You see, sounds, sounds never really die. But they continue to, to agitate the air molecules about us. This machine picks up and recaptures those sounds. Now, wait, I'll show you. Come. I ought to get it more clearly than that, the wait. like Galacucci. Yes, I believe it is. But that's impossible. She hasn't sung for, well, for years. Where do you keep your records, Uncle Leland? There are no records, Pat. This electronic device actually picks up sounds of the past. Now listen. I've been getting that interference now for weeks. Oh, wait, I'll try something else. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The time dial indicates that was about 19 years ago. This is fantastic. Do you realize the possibilities of this thing? Yes. And this time, no one's going to steal it from me. Oh, if I can only eliminate that interference. Look. Time, time. It's swinging way back in time. Way past the Middle Ages. Look. What's that sound? Madeline, Madeline, what are you doing? Don't look so surprised. It's really very easy to associate this drum major's baton with C.H. Maslin and Sons. After all, they've been leading the way in the carpet parade for a good many years, not just by weaving outstanding carpets and rugs, but also by starting many of the new floor covering trends that are absolutely traditional in the field today. Now, for the past several months, it's been my privilege to bring you many of the lovely carpets and rugs that have helped to uphold Maslin's leadership in the carpet and rug field. And I thought it might be an appropriate occasion tonight to review some of them. After all, this might be just the right time for you to brighten up one of the rooms in your home with a new Beauty Blend Broadloom. So, uh, shall we take a look? First, let's look at New Ballerina, one of Maslin's loveliest textured broadlooms. Its rhythmic high-low pattern blends with both modern and traditional furnishings. Next, delightful all-wool cantata. Now, this sculptured Wilton with a dramatic tone-on-tone -tone pattern is cantata. And cantata makes any room look warmer and exceedingly elegant. And, of course, we have to include exciting new nubbinae. And here it is. The entirely different all-wool broadloom that's woven with these random nubs of brilliantly colored saran plastic. Nubbinae is just about the easiest carpet for color planning that you could possibly buy. And now, let's join the trend to cotton. Cotton especially suited to smart, modern interiors. This is Maslin's Carioca. A cotton broadloom with a textured twist pile. It's beautiful, it's long-wearing, and it's completely washable. Carioca comes in a breathtaking range of decorative colors. Among them are lipstick red, jasmine yellow, and quartz green. Now these, of course, are just a few of the many beautiful Maslin Beauty Blend broadlooms that are waiting for your inspection at your Maslin dealer's shop. 
On television, we try to show you pattern and weave. But let's face it, to really appreciate the full line of Maslin Beauty Blend Broadlooms in all their glorious colors, you've got to see them for yourself. So visit your Maslin dealer soon. As a matter of fact, tomorrow would be a good day, wouldn't it? And now, let's return to the second act of The Bitter Storm, starring Arnold Moss. Steve, let's get her in the bedroom. I'll take Easy, Pat. I'm all right, Pat. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you all like this. What was it, Madeline? What happened? I've got to know. She's in no condition to talk. No, Mother, Mother, lie back. No, you mustn't get up, Mrs. Barnett. Please. Leland. Madeline, Madeline, you've got to tell me while it's still fresh in your mind. Oh, please, Madeline, try, try. What were those sounds? Most dreadful. The most glorious sounds I ever heard, Keith. The most... Oh, little I can't find words. Oh, please, Madeline, try, try. No, Leland. I think you are the one who must try. I heard and understood. And now you must look into your own heart to know why those sounds were only noise to you. I'll ask you again when you've come to your senses. Keep her quiet for now, Pat. I'll be right back. I want to talk to your uncle. Yes, sir. I'm worried about that storm. Hello. Operator. Hello, operator. Operator. Hello. Phone's dead. The line must be down. Steve, where are you going? Look. Look, Professor. Look at those trees. The wind's reaching hurricane velocity. What do we do? Those trees can't stand it much longer. The wind's ripping everything apart. The trees are beginning to crack. They'll smash the house. We've got to try to make it to shore. In this weather, we'd be drowned in five minutes. This old house can't stand that beating. And those trees will come down any minute. It's just a matter of time. Well, how are we going to get away? The launch is out in the middle of the channel. Mother, what were those sounds you heard on the machine? Can't you tell me? Not even you, Pat. But you'll know, I think. It's a message no one can escape who will only listen. What message? Later. Pat, read to me a while, please. All right, Mother. What would you like? The Bible, Pat, please. The way your father used to read it. Open it any place, Pat. And seeing the multitudes, he, he went up into the mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Where's Steve? He's gone, Pat. We've got to leave the island. Steve has gone to get the launch. We can't stop him. We can't. It's too late. He's already started. But he'll never make it out there. What did he go for? I don't know, Pat. I... There it is. Look, I can see him. And he can fight his way through those winds. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I can't see him anymore. Oh, he'll be all right. I'm sure of it, Pat. Oh, look, there, there he is. There, I can see him. Pat! Pat, he's made it. Look! Look, he's reached the launch. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Pat! Pat, darling. Pat, she's calling you, but don't, don't say anything to her until we're ready to leave. Yes, Mother. What is it? Pat, do you remember any of the Aramaic lines your father taught you? The words of the Bible as Christ spoke them in his time? Oh, only a little, Mother, of uh, Christ's words of the crucifixion. Eli, Eli, lama shvaktani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? and get out of here. Do you think we've got a chance? We'll, we'll take the channel back. The island will block us from the wind most of the way. I can't understand it. I can't understand it. Understand what, Uncle Lee? He actually rode out through that storm to get the launch. Well, what else could I do? I didn't have much choice. Mr. Steve, you, you risked your life in order to help us. Steve, I'm beginning to realize what Madeline meant. I'm beginning to understand. Mother, I... I'm ready. Good. Pat, grab a few things quick. Oh. Professor? How can I abandon five years' work in a single moment, except for one small thing? It's perfect. You were right. I, I hear it. I hear it, and the interference is gone. I understand every single word. Hurry, the storm's getting worse. No, 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 wait. Wait, just, 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 just listen. It's all coming back to me, Madeline. It comes back to me now. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him a whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe and... And when they had plated a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots. And they set up over his head 
the accusation. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And at about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Madeline, Madeline, what was that? What was that? And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the, the earth did quake and the rocks rent. be lost. My work has a new meaning now. Those sounds meant nothing to me until I had faith in people. But now, at last, I know what I'm working for, what I'll always work for. Way back machine one. 